start, proceed, and end on time to on the agenda. So, all right, for those who are joining us via, via Zoom, good evening, welcome. And uh, for those here in person, good evening and welcome. Great to see everyone again. And uh, for our newcomers, welcome. Uh, just a quick uh, rundown of our Zoom instructions just to make sure your microphones are muted. Use the chat box, and we have begun starting, we have begun uh, the recording. If you wish not to be recorded, you can simply just turn off your camera, that's fine. Uh, and we will officially call the meetings to order or to the roll call of the board. All right. Uh, Liz? Present. Lee? Present. Abby? Present. Adam? Present. And Christina, myself, I'm here. And Gina. Oh, I'm a shandy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, but just slightly, right? Ms. Gina. Present. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. All right. And um, just wanted to double check with you, Adam. Do we have enough voting members here to um, move forward with the agenda? Just uh, if there was any. Uh, approving last month's agenda. Uh, I am still catching people as they come in. We're not quite there, but we could possibly be there. I do want to raise that there may have been some difficulty prior to just now with people being able to access the, the online file. Um, so maybe we want to push it to next month, but that's a chair decision, I guess. Oh, that's fine. We can, we can certainly do that. Um, and we have our financial report with our treasurer, Ms. Tina Tan. In December, the ending balance was $3,322.42. However, we have finally an increase of $3,617.18 for our January ending balance. We have finally completed reimbursing our vice chair for all the technology costs that he assumed and that totaled $160.24. But we had some donations the first time since November 22nd of 2022. We had a donation, a $200 anonymous donation, a $5 donation, which to me is just as important as a $200. And then for our door prize, we collected $230. So our deposits for January are four hundred thirty-five dollars. All right, thank you so yeah. much, Tina. You're welcome. All right, and um, normally we take this time to hear from Lieutenant Michael Pumiani with the New Haven Police Department. Uh, he's in Haven, um, in charge of Fairhaven. Haven. He was unable to be here this evening uh, in person or online, so I just wanted to provide his cell phone number, uh, just in case anyone needed to get a hold of him. You can uh, text, text with your name first. Uh, his cell phone number is 475-331-3180. And I know you did throw that in the chat as well, Adam. Thank you so much for that. Moving on, uh, Carmen Mendez usually joins us uh, via Zoom. Can you see her on yet? Yep, Carmen's here. Okay. Carmen's here. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Carmen. Okay, that's excellent. I'm over at a colleague's retirement party, so I'm in my car right now, but essentially, very briefly, there were 25 notices of violation written in July. I mean, in January, I'm sorry, January. Uh, three or four of them are in citation level, and one of them just paid us off for $6,889. Wow. Dang. Good. We're definitely going. So mm -hmm. we... um. You know, the next month, hopefully, it'll be more letters and more stuff coming up. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a tough time for people. People are pushing back a lot, and uh, but they are complying. So sooner or later, we will see a difference in the poor sections of Fairhaven, and then Fairhaven in general, we'll see some changes. Ferry Street, we've hit very hard, very very hard, and we keep hammering at it, and hopefully, at some point. We will see, maybe hopefully during the spring of this coming year here, we'll see it looking very nice. That's what we're hoping for. 
Okay, great. Thank you so Carmen, much. Carmen, I have I have a question, Carmen. When you say we've been hitting it hard, can you um can you provide some language around that? Sure, sure. When I say hitting it hard is that we're walking the block and we're going house to house. And we're looking at the structures of the house. We're looking at roofing. We're looking at porches. We're looking at steps. We're looking at walkways. We're looking to see, especially if there is, it's two or more families. Um, we look for those things that might provide that might present a hazard to you, to your tenants, yourself, or someone even walking by. Believe it or not. So we look at the housing code inspector comes out with me. And he also takes care of the inside. So with permission or with an appointment, he goes inside the apartments to look for safety and health uh, risk uh, issues. Did that answer your question? That does, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Carmen, for your report. And if anyone does need to reach out to her, uh, her email address and cell phone number are in the agenda as well. See Mendez at newhavenc2.gov, cell phone 203-410-6527. Thank you so much, Carmen. Yes, I, I wanted to add a note because there's a gentleman who um always asked about the graffiti. Graffiti letters went out and they're going to continue to go out. Uh, people have called. They have a stay, obviously, because they can't do anything until April. But hopefully we will we'll start counting down in April if the graffiti isn't removed. Again, there is pushback, but people understand the graffiti has to come off their windows and, or their buildings. So we hopefully we'll see a difference there as well. Oh, great. Thank you so much for that update. You're welcome. All right, have a great night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye, everyone. Uh, all right, moving forward, uh, just a quick reminder of our quarterly presentation from the Civilian Review, Civilian Review Board, J1 Carter, who gives a quarterly presentation. And if you need to reach out to him, it's j1.carter at gmail.com. And with economic development updates, uh, Kathleen Prolock usually gives those, usually um, via Zoom. Let me just double check and see if she's here. I'm right here. Oh, oh, you want to see it? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. oh sorry. I didn't see the first thing. Oh. Uh, yeah, we ask you presenters to sit right there and the camera's right in front. She gives one of those to Up on the corner where it says view. Okay. Upper right hand corner where it says view. Upper right, other side. So you view, here you go, put that. You can do the gallery, you can do the cell. Yeah. And then go to your cell for putting him on. Okay. Right. There you go. So you can see. Yes, deeper. All right, go ahead. Um, he hello. Um, Kathleen couldn't be here tonight, so um, um, I, 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 I'm Malachi. I'm here to uh present for her. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. One second. Wait a moment. Sorry, Malachi. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. No problem. Good, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, so last week, last I spoke, uh, I believe it was in December. Uh, I, I spoke based on this year D will be having a conversation with their alders. I'm sorry if you could speak up a little bit. I sure can. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll try, right? Yeah. Scream at so the last I spoke, uh, I believe in December, I was letting folks know that the CRB will be having a board of alders meeting for us to make some changes in our bylaws that will allow the CRB to actually be a little bit more functional and being a bit more proactive when it comes down to how do we assess and review and make recommendations for cases. Um, now, that forum went well. Um, there was not a lot of folks from the public, but what I've done and learned from that experience was to push our uh, consultant to give us a flyer on the next one, which will be March 25th. I will also upload it to the link there um, for folks there to get a, a copy. 
So in this forum, um, we look, we're asking for community support because there's a bit of a pushback with the police department per se, mm -hmm. um, only because of uh, just the fact that they think that the CRB should be comfortable and content in where it's at. However, the community actually wants us and the actual laws allow us to have a little bit more authority on the way we're presented. And we have made a lot of progress. So if we can get folks in the community to come out um, and support us on March 25th at 6 p.m. And again, I will upload this uh, to the link there. And there will be another brochure that I'll submit on March ahead of time. They're working on it now. Thank you. Just real quick, could you just, for the people, they only hear you maybe once a quarter, some haven't been here before, yes. CRB stands for, and your responsibilities are? The CRB stands for Civilian Review Board. Uh, each police district, um, CMT, has a representative, and there's an additional bodies that are at large. Um, our job is to review civilian complaints of police conduct, misconduct. Um, and with that being the case, we have the ability to make recommendations, whether it's training or we could actually put in, uh, uh, I'll say, uh, I'll continue to word recommendation for discipline. Um, we don't have disciplinary power, but we're looking to actually fulfill some of that role. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Ewan. Right now, and um, Malachi said he was going to be giving the updates on behalf of Kathleen Prolap, correct? Yes. Okay. You mentioned that in an email as well. Malachi, Your yes. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, correct. So hello, everyone. My name is Malachi Bridges. I'm from the city of New Haven, Office of Economic Development, where I oversee neighborhood commercial. Um. So yes, I'm stepping in for Kathleen tonight. And um, I'm I have three action items on mind, and um, those are the CIF grant update, also the Mill River update, mm -hmm. and lastly English Station. So first, um, as you all know, thank you all so much. I think the last time I was here, I was presenting about the Grand Avenue grant for the seven point five million dollars, and um, as you may know, that um, the city of New Haven was successful in 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 achieving that grant. So, um, you know, hats off to you all for asking your questions and really making us think and going back to the ironing board to, you know, make corrections and, and um, according to your suggestions. So I do thank you um, for that participation. And just as an update on that, so the city has, um, um, is in the process of initiating the grant agreement with the state of Connecticut. So we have submitted a budget and a construction timeline. We expect construction to begin late um, 24, early 2025. Um, currently, um, now the state has not yet approved. However, this is what we submitted. Um, so the state has to sign off on this. Um, and we expect to start design um, maybe mid um, 2024, so around March or April. Um, I say maybe because we will be releasing contracts for public bid um, for an architect or certain contractors to be involved in the designing process. So it's just not going to be internal. We're also going to be um, releasing some of these tasks for, um, you know, for a, a vendor. Um, so we expect that to be either in April, um, in, in March or, eight, or April of 2024. And we expect construction, so that's demolition, to begin late 2024 or early 25. Um, now for the second update, the city of New Haven was also successful in an Urban Act grant to receive $5 million from the state of Connecticut for Mill River District. And for that, we expect to be um, completing the Mill River Trail, also um, assisting with some infrastructure in and around the Mill River District. And we would be acquiring some blighted properties in Mill River as well. Um, we haven't identified those properties yet. However, this 5 million give us, gives us the flexibility to identify some specific properties that we could acquire for redevelopment. So we're super excited about that. And then my last update is on English Station. Um, English Station, there was a press conference this week where the Attorney General and Deep um, went to English Station um, regarding UI. 
And that was a very productive meeting, but the, the attorney general will bring a lawsuit against um, UI to be able to take control over the English station project. You know, that is a very beautiful site, but it is <laughs> contaminated and not much work or progress has been done on the site. So the attorney general and the state and the city are trying to um, take control of that property. Um, so that was really the updates. Please let me know if you have any questions. I know I went a little fast. So um, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer. Uh, any questions here in the library? Not seeing anything. And do you see anything online, Adam? Uh, yeah, Maureen. Okay. Um, I think it was even in today's um, some news coverage. It looks like UI is going to push back on um, you know claiming that they have already fulfilled the 2016 agreement, or I think that's the right year. Um, is that not a surprise? Are you sort of prepared for um, there's going to be more negotiations? <laughs> yes, um, that's not a surprise, of course. Um, you know, we we kind of expected that. I mean, this is really the state leading the way. So, um, you know, the, the city is assisting in any capacity that it is requested. Um, so, yeah, the, we, 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 we did expect that. So we're just, um, you know, we're just kind of trying to follow the process and really trying to follow the state's lead. Okay. It'd be so great to have that cleaned up. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> we can have a, a question or a comment here from uh, Jay Swan. Go ahead. Um, I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, you can hear me. Up closer. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Um, my question is: Is the city is the city aware that there is a fund that the UI is supposed to be a part of in regards of William Tong's office for future projects? Could that be the actual battle that's what's happening between the office and the private entity? Is the city aware of that? Um, I'm not so I'm I, I'm I'm not that aware of of the illegal grievances. Um, I'm just really I'm so right now I'm I'm stepping in for for someone else. So just from what I I've been told and what I've been briefed on, um, only my knowledge extends to the the legal battles over what has not been done that was supposed to be done. Um, due to an agreement that um, you know predates me and a lot of other uh, a lot of other people in my office, so you, which is why the city is kind of opting to to the state's direction as to how to handle this and you know in, in, in the best way and you know to be most efficient. Yeah, did you want to yeah uh, I, I have some relevant information, Malachi. If I may, uh, the reason sure. why the Attorney General Tong was here is because. It's been five years, something like that, and UI is spinning their wheels, doing studies, running numbers, and the bottom line is they're not progressing and they're consuming the money. So the, the lawsuit is not to get more money from them, is to get off your butts and do what you're supposed to do. That's why the money was set aside, because they're just taking a lot of time doing that. And so that's why uh, he was here. And I had a semi-relevant point of information, which is in this last week, week and a half, we had the state attorney general was here in, in Fairhaven, Whoa. working with us on that issue. We had the secretary of labor of the United States at match down on Mill Street talking about labor issues. And then we had the secretary of education of the United States here talking about a grant that they gave us for the schools. Yeah. So I, I would say that for being one neighborhood in one small city, we're not doing too bad in getting some allies at the state and federal level to work with us to improve our neighborhood. So that is a reason I think for us really to pat ourselves on the back, because mm -hmm. if you have big problems, you need big friends with powerful uh, arms and hands that are willing to fight for you. So just be aware of that. Thank you. Thank That's you awesome. Much. Uh, before we move on, I thought I saw a hand up uh, online, but I wasn't sure if they wanted to add anything. I think it was Anne Stress Farrell. I think the hand went down. Oh, no, hand back up. Uh, Anne Stress. Hello. Um, just to follow up on what Lee said, um, that's all true. Like 20 million has been spent, but the 
place is very far from being cleaned up. It's been spent on study after study. And um, after 34 million, they could um, apply to try to charge um, the costs to ratepayers. So there's, um, it's, it's just so unfair in every way that this building that could have a, a wonderful future and serve the city and serve the neighborhoods has just been falling apart. Um, if there was a, um, a volunteer that went through all of the files on how UI has spent the money and created a spreadsheet about it, and if anyone wants to see it, he did a report to the city's Environmental Advisory Council. And it shows just very clearly how the money that has been spent has been misspent. I'll put my email in chat. And if anyone wants to see more about that, um, I can send you the link to look at it. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, moving forward with our vision in action uh, under the category of responsive, transparent government, economic, community development. Uh, start off, we have Paola Sorecia with Home Hope Family Justice Center uh, requesting CDBG grant request for a letter of support. Mm -hmm. Is Paola with us? Uh, I don't see online if you're dialed in by phone. I think it's star six to talk. Uh, Paola did confirm. Okay. Well, if she shows up, maybe we can let her speak later on. So yeah. we can go to. All right, thank you. So moving forward. Uh, next up, we would have under environment and immigration, uh, Sean Krzyzewski with Sanka, request for a letter of support. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is John Krzyzewski um, with Circa at the University of Connecticut. And I'm um, here to ask for a letter of support for a proposal that we've been working on in partnership with the city of New Haven. And, um, you know, I, I came to the CMT in December to present uh, this project, which came out of uh, Resilient Fair Haven, which was a, a year long study that we did in partnership with the community in the city. Um, so the proposal is to be one of uh, six communities uh, in this proposal to develop a resilience hub in Fairhaven. So the, the process of developing the hub would be, um, you know, a process of identifying potential sites uh, to play this role as a resilience hub. And there would be money set aside for local community-based organizations to uh, participate in a team that would staff the hub over five years, and there would be funding for uh, things like solar panels and battery storage and a potential microgrid to improve the resilience of a facility. Um, and so this is one that we're doing in partnership with a bunch of different groups, including um, you know folks in Bridgeport and uh, Hartford, Norwalk, Danbury, uh, and in Sonia. Um, so um, we had a workshop with Junta for Progressive Action on uh, January 10th, earlier this month, to talk about the grant uh, idea and get some feedback. Um, so I'm just asking for a letter of support um, for, for this proposal from the CMT. All right, thank you so much. Uh, before we move forward, any questions? Comments either in person or online for John. I think Sally and I both have questions online. Oh, okay. I don't see any questions in person, so we can go to Sally. Go ahead, Sally. Little bit of you, 
Hi, thank you. Um, thanks, John, for coming back to the management team. I think I've asked this before, but I, I have actually two questions. One is, what city agencies are you working with in New Haven? That's first. And secondly, um, I really would like to be sure that there is specific language for anything that we support that um, says that the facility chosen and whatever is chosen will be uh, accessible under the Americans with Disabilities Act and make sure that all of our neighbors can access the services that will be provided there. So if you could respond to those two things, that would be great. Thank you. Sure. Um, so we've been working with uh, the city's sustainability office, uh, the emergency management director, Rick Fontana, um, city plan, um, city engineering, um, also the city's health department, we've engaged on this. So they've, they've all uh, been involved in some discussions about, about the proposal and um, they will be involved in the process. Um, and then the second question, I think you gave me that feedback back in December, which was really mm -hmm. helpful. So we will make sure that we um, include, you know, ADA compliance and really thinking about that up front in the, the process of discussions about which sites are appropriate for a resilience hub. And, and yes, we will definitely include that language. And if you'd, if you'd like to see some specific language, I'd be happy to share that as well. Um, I'd like to actually offer the assistance of the Commission on Disabilities and uh, the Office of uh, Disability Services too for you know any kind of questions that you might have about the process. Um, you have many other city agencies involved. Um, they have different perspectives and different, um, you know, focuses. So, you know, the the accessibility perspective, especially during an emergency, really needs to be thought through in advance. So, I'm happy to talk to you offline. So, uh, or connect you with the commission in one way or another. So, again, thank you. No problem. Thank you, sir. Did you have anything? Oh, oh, Adam had a question, okay. and then I went to follow up. Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask, uh, so you're asking for a letter of support. Are you specifically asking uh, the Fairhaven Community Management Team to issue a letter of support for one of these centers in Fairhaven or just general support for the resilience hubs in across Connecticut? Um, yeah, I'm asking for a letter of support for this specific proposal, which is to uh, NOAA, which is a federal agency, the national Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is the, the federal sponsor that we're applying for funds. Uh, so the, the letter of support would be to support this proposal. For, for Fairhaven specifically? Yes. So related to that and in support of Sally's uh, uh, suggestion and knowing that we're gonna vote between now and Sunday, uh, Sally, is there any chance that you could look at the question as it's going to be posed and help us because we try to keep the question brief to, to include sufficient language that in combination with John's commitment to work with Office of Disabilities would give us a chance to incorporate right in our recommendation specific brief language that says all whatever language you you know you know the right stuff. You're a lawyer, so <laughs> I, I'm you know? happy to help. So whoever need whoever is drafting that, uh, just let me know or get in touch with me. That's a connection between John, Adam, and yourself that I'm just sounds um, good. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for bringing it up. All right. Uh, are there any additional questions or comments before we move on? I don't see anything here uh, in the library. And are you seeing any, anything else online, Adam? Okay. I see, see none, no. Okay, great. Just want to make sure before we move forward. Um, under the health, housing, and public safety category, uh, we have Ms. Andrea Swenson with Catholic Charities Family Service Center. Um, she wants to talk about some focus groups in Fairhaven to uh, explore expansion of services. I had a PowerPoint. Oh, yeah. It's in the email. Adam, do you want me to? 
uh, uh, sorry, did I get this email or did it go to the general? The it's about seven down in the general. I'll I'll forward it to you right now. Sorry, I didn't board that. I'll, I can I, yeah, I can pull up the CMT email. One sec. Okay. Andrea. Hi, I'm Andrea Swenson. I am um, Senior Director at Behavioral Health with Catholic Charity. And I wanted to talk a bit about our expansion under a new grant um, that we have. It's called a CCBHC grant, Certified Community Behavioral Health Clinic. It's, so there is the PowerPoint. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I was getting it up. Thank you. Um, first of all, we're an outpatient substance abuse and mental health clinic that's located at 501 Lombard Street. Um, and we are, you can, thank you. <laughs> the grant is a federal grant from SAMHSA, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Um, the grant period will go until 2027, and it's allowing us to expand what we currently offer and create some new services to the community. Um, it helps us increase and improve the quality of mental health and substance use disorders for children and youth in, and adults in New Haven. Um, we will have 24 hour, seven day a week access to community-based and integrated primary care and community-based behavioral health care. Our goal is to reach 1,300 clients over the grant period. Um, we're going to be starting with renovations. We're located um, in the old St. Donato's. And so we're working to um, separate a child and adult wing and we'll hopefully get some um, new landscaping and sort of a facelift so that people know that we're actually there. Um, we will be doing integrated care with both behavioral health and connecting with primary care doctors. Um, individuals with FMI, severe mental illness, die 25 years younger than the general population because of chronic illness. We will also be doing holistic services for children and adults. And veterans will be a priority. Um, mm -hmm. We'll be providing these services regardless of the ability to pay. So we accept all major insurance, but we will also be able to provide the services for people that are uninsured and undocumented. We currently have an IOP program, Intensive Outpatient for Substance Use. Um, we are working on getting our licensure through DCF for children. Um, so that's to be, to be in the future. We were able to increase our staffing. We'll have a peer recovery specialist, a targeted case manager for SMI clients and substance use clients. We'll have a medical assistant. We'll be taking vitals and communicating with primary care doctors data analyst, uh, more clinical staff, and increased psychiatry hours. Um, we will be doing evidence-based treatments, CBT, EMDR, motivational interviewing, and TREM, and MATCH for children. We are developing MOUs with local agencies. So for psychosocial rehabilitation services, we're working with Fellowship Place. We're also partnering with Fair Haven um, for primary care services. So we're hoping to get ourselves in the community to get to know um, various agencies in a way that we have not in the past. We'll be doing emergency mobile crisis for both adults and youth, tobacco cessation groups. We will be developing an advisory council of 51% clients. You can, next slide. So the outcomes uh, is hopefully improved physical and mental health for our clients, reduced in substance use, um, again, improved access to care regardless of their ability to pay, culturally competent and holistic care, and a, overall a reduction in hospitalizations and high-risk behaviors. Mm -hmm. So the last slide is just our services that we offer now. We currently have these, so in addition to a, what with the grant is, is offering. We currently have FVEP, which is referred by the courts. It's a family violence education program, a nine-week psychoeducation course. 
We have VOCA. Anyone that is a victim of crime in the state of Connecticut has access to free clinical and case management services. We're also starting a fatherhood program. Those are also referred by the court for fathers struggling with child support payments. It will be case management and ideally employment opportunities. And we have parenting education program for couples who are filing for divorce in Connecticut. It's a one day course that, that's a requirement for the state of Connecticut. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I think, did you um, mention that you had a focus group? Was the focus it, group was before this group. Oh, it already, oh, it already yeah. happened. Yeah, okay. we're going to be doing, they've done at various agencies um, already, and we're going to be doing a fully client-based focus group. But yeah, the focus group was earlier. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, any questions or comments? <laughs> Just in case. Being I, out in person. We got Sally online. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Just a uh, quick I think you heard the my uh, questions and comments about the other uh, facility earlier. Um, that's a very old building. The church is a very old building. And uh, have you do you have a plan or you know maybe it's too early for it to make sure that it's accessible to everybody in the community, including those that might be able not be able to do those that huge flight of stairs in the front. We do have an elevator. So coming in the lobby, there's an elevator that goes to all floors. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't see any additional questions online. Uh, nothing here in person. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. All right, moving on to our arts, culture, and library segment. We have Kirk here with the Fairhaven Library joining us via Zoom. Hey, everyone. Um, uh, welcome to everyone who's here and to all those online. Hopefully, hopefully we will see you soon. Um, our biggest announcement of, I guess, many um, is uh, starting next week, we will be offering uh, the VITA uh, volunteer income tax assistance um, right, uh, right in the, the room where the, um, the, uh, uh, the management team meeting is going on right now. Um, because of the management team uh, meeting and um, a couple of events we have uh, coming up for Black History Month this month, we are not going to have them uh, every Thursday, uh, but uh, check in with us and we can tell you uh, which Thursdays, but basically uh, the majority of Thursdays between now and um, tax filing deadline day, you will be able to uh, have a volunteer help uh, prepare your taxes. Um, Appointments are required, though, uh, and um, and you make those by way of two one one. But if you have any questions, uh, please let us know. But this is uh, this is the first time we're offering this, uh, uh, at, at least in in my memory here. So um, please help us spread the word. Uh, next, I wanted to let everybody know um, that we have a, uh, a full um, slate of uh, activities and events going on this month for, uh, to uh, celebrate Black History Month. Uh, we, we will have uh, any day that kids under 12 come in, there's going to be a scavenger hunt uh, to look for clues on uh, 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 famous Black entrepreneurs and inventors, which is, uh, which is our focus uh, this year. Uh, if kids complete the scavenger hunt, they are eligible for a prize. Um, also next week, um, uh, for, for kids who um, uh, you do the, the STEAM program in schools, uh, we're going to be focusing on the uh, inventor Garrett Morgan, and there will be a, 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 a project going on along the lines uh, of, um, of his invention. Uh, and then uh, a couple of things to highlight for adults that will be taking uh, uh, taking place later this month. On February 15th, um, uh, Calvin Ramsey is going to be in to do a presentation about the uh, both um, Black and Black Latino uh, baseball players of the of the uh, of the uh, old Negro leagues uh, in the era before uh, baseball was integrated. I uh, hope you'll come to see that. That it will be. Thursday, February 15th, and then our uh, friends from the New Haven Museum will be in on Thursday the 29th to do a presentation about William Lanson, 
who was uh, one of the first black uh, black entrepreneurs in New Haven. Uh, had a lot to do with the development of Long Wharf and, and other uh, places in New Haven. Uh, so if you don't know about uh, John Lanson, um, this, would be the, this would be the time to, to learn more. Um, also, I wanted to make sure that uh, everyone who uh, gets frustrated about their, uh, their computers or uh, their devices uh, come in to see our Melba. Uh, three different hours a week, uh, Melba has time to uh, set aside to meet you by our computers and um, help uh, with whatever frustrations you might have. Uh, you, uh, you know, uh, if you come during those times, uh, it's, it's first come first serve. Um, but we have a lot going on. Uh, um, come in and say hi. Uh, when we were uh, getting the, the meeting set up tonight, I was almost running out of room with all of our flyers that we have now. So uh, if you haven't been in a while, come see us soon. Thanks. Thanks so much, Kurt. Can I ask a question? Oh, yeah, go ahead. For the income tax preparation, is there any specific eligibility that people need to have to, to have that service? Yes, income of 63000 or lower. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, one more question. Yes, uh, and I'll tell you to pay that other than 211 for their questions. For 211, I can't get through for the six, last six years. <laughs> I'm sorry, was there another question or? Yeah, oh. question. Yeah. No, not working either. Is there an alternative way to 211 for getting an appointment because the gentleman has had difficulty getting through to 211? Um, I'm, I'm only, I, you may be able to make it online instead of calling, but uh, but you go, you do need to go through 211. 211, in addition to being a phone number, is also a website, uh, 211ct.com. And, and on there, there should be a way to do it without actually talking to a person. All right, thank you. Thank you for uh, adding that to Any additional questions? Before we move on, don't see anything in person and I'm not seeing anything online. So uh, um, before we move to announcements, Madam Chair, I just wanted to ask about uh, the, the votes that we would be having this evening. Oh, go ahead. Uh, so uh, is, is Ms. Ms. Sarechia available? Is, are you here? Okay. I don't see it. Uh, uh, should we postpone a, a, any vote on the, the grant request or because they have not? Yeah. All right, so I will remove that um, that that question and I'm going to pull up a shared screen real quick. Um, so the, the vote for the, the, the Resilience Hub, I have written as shall the Fairhaven Community Management Team Issue a letter of support uh, in, wait, let, issue a letter in support of Circa's plan to establish a resilient hub in Fairhaven. Uh, there would be one of six in Connecticut. Our support for this letter will be contingent on a consideration of ADA and other accessibility concerns. Uh, does, does that sound good to anyone? Does anyone have a, a, a different vote they wanna take? I just have a question. Uh, is there a dollar amount he's requesting or just the support? It, it is just a letter of support that we are generally in favor of a resilience hub in Fairhaven. Oh. Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah, All right. So I'm going to fix this, take off the, the first vote uh, that they didn't they didn't present, so we don't really know what to vote about. And I will post this vote into the chat box. Uh, you'll have till Sunday at midnight to answer it. Uh, it'll also go out in the, the after meeting email if you want to answer then, or you can talk to Christina before you leave tonight and give your vote to her. All right, and I will get that out momentarily while the announcements are happening. Thank you so much, and moving on to a few announcements, um, we have Ms. Marianne Moran uh, regarding Seed Spot. She's here in person. 
Yes, Folly Delgado is going to be doing the oh, presentation. Okay. Oh, that's right. Well, you did say that. Hello, my name is Polly Delgado. I am the uh, coordinator of the Clinton Avenue School Community Garden, and I am also a frequent presenter here at the Fairhaven Library. Um, I will be hosting a workshop on Saturday, February 10th. It will be a garden seed swap and meet and greet. I have some flyers over on the table, and some flyers have also been uh, passed around um, before the meeting started. I hope you will please uh, pass um, the word about this um, small gathering. Um, although spring is right around the corner, it's also several weeks away and a small event like this can be very helpful to community members who may be struggling and can use a little um, social event to get reconnected with community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Delgado. We're just passing the flyer around if you want one, take one. If you don't, just pass it to the next person. Okay, great. Uh, with our next announcement, we have Ms. Kayla Cruz joining the Zoom from the Women and Family Center about a support group that will be starting here in New Haven. Hello, thank you for having me. Um, I just wanted to announce that the Women and Family Center We'll be hosting a support group for survivors of sexual violence completely in Spanish. It'll start in March um, at our New Haven location, 142 Temple Street, um, 430. I have the flyer that I can put in the chat for everyone. And if you want flyers, I can email them to you as well. And thank you. Thank you so much, Kayla. <laughs> Uh, next up with Mary Wade Holm, um, we have the Outstanding Leadership Board uh, nominations announcement. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I just wanted to present, uh, we're going to have a, a kickoff event prior to the Fayhaven Festival and Parade on Friday, May the 3rd, and we're going to be presenting the Outstanding Leadership Award for someone in the community that has been an inspiration, a resource, a role model. And that's gonna be presented at the Mary Wade Home Grounds on Friday, May the 3rd, between 10 and 12 p.m. Uh, Gina Toppings does have the nomination forms. She also has the band jam flyer for that. We're gonna invite some of the school bands to come just perform for the residents. And in the process, we're gonna also present the Outstanding Leadership Award. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank and the you. flyers are on the table for the people in Zoom, and we'll do an email blast for the nomination form tomorrow. Yes, correct. Thank you, Gina. Okay. Yeah, so I, I have the next announcement. But I just want to say, having been the recipient of this award, and I know Frank was this last year, this is a wonderful thing. If you know someone in the neighborhood that's going above and beyond, nominate them, because this is just a, a, a nice recognition of volunteer work. So think about someone you know who's really making a difference in our community and get them this uh, recognition. They, they try to do it as a surprise for the person. So it's, it's just kind of a nice thing for them. So uh, if you know someone, nominate someone. And, and okay. also forms will be available at the library after this meeting. All right, great. Thank you, Gina. <laughs> So my announcement, I'm going to just go over there so I can be on the screen and, and people can see the urgency with which I am pleading this. So we have, <laughs> yes, we, we have, no, not a raffle, oh, door prize, okay. door prize. <laughs> we, we have printed 160 <laughs> tickets for $10 each to win a 65-inch LG television. And we so we're we're doing okay. We've sold that I know of now 37, 38, 39. What's the two I gave you? Okay, so four, 40 tickets. So we're 25% there. We have another month to sell tickets. I know everything, everybody does everything last minute. But if you have $10 to spare, you've helped the management team, no harm, no foul. 
but you have only, if you're only one uh, max of 160 tickets and we might not even sell all of those and you win this television. Now, you may say, I don't need a 65 inch television in my house. Fair point, fair point. That, that, exactly, Sarah and I don't have space. So what did we do with it? We gave it to the management team to raffle. You can also buy a ticket as I have done for and, and just buy them in the name of your favorite nonprofit organization and have a nonprofit organization be able to benefit from having that for their clients. Point being is we're trying to do everything we can to make it possible for all of us with very low, um, you know, not, not a very high money commitment to make a difference. So if you can afford this, uh, buy a ticket. If, if you can afford it, buy it for a nonprofit, buy it for your friends and uh, help us. We will be doing the actual selection of the ticket at the March meeting, like the first Thursday of March. But please, please buy a ticket, or I challenge you to do what I did, which is buy four tickets. But please, please do that. I do have tickets available right now, and I take cash and checks. I was going to say, uh, on that note, I want to add that uh, as a more I don't know, cell phone using person. Uh, I, I'm opening up my personal Venmo, PayPal, whatever. Um, so I'm going to put my my cell number in the chat. Uh, it's 312-371-6476. Uh, and if you just text me, we can work it out. However it works. If you can't get to Lee and hand him a $10 bill, text me. We can Venmo it. We can PayPal it. I'll figure it out. It'll happen. And then once, you know, I, I'll, I'll send Lee the cash and he'll take a picture and we'll work it out. So you'll, you can get your thing, but please just text me if you, if you can't make it to Lee. So 312-371-6476. Thank you. Thank, thank you for that. And I would just add that tickets are available. If you can't find me, you don't have the money now. At Junta, they have tickets. And uh, Eric from Gadsby, the guy that walks up and down Grand Avenue, he has tickets as well. So whether you're walking Grand Avenue, you're over at Junta, online with Adam or me, you can call me. I'll give you my number if you're not available tonight. And I'll meet you. I'll come to your house. Uh, we just want to raise money for the management team. You already know what we do with this money. We support the elderly through the Thanksgiving event. We support Fair Haven Day. We're, we're supporting stuff in our community. This money is going into no one's pocket uh, except the community's pocket. Thank that you. was my question. It's going into the management Yes, okay. 100%. Okay. 100 percent. With, with a very brief stint in mine or Lee's wallet after you hand it to us, but then straight to the manager team after. Yeah. Yeah. Into our wallet long enough to get it to Gina to put it in the account. And if I get excited about a $5 anon anonymous donation, I'll get really happy with a $10. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, with our next announcement, it's uh, regarding the Fair Haven Day preview. Kiana is on Zoom. Okay. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So good evening. Um, my name is Candace Sanchano. I'm at school right now, so unfortunately I couldn't join everyone in person. Um, but I work at Junta for Progressive Action. I'm the project manager for this year's Fair Haven Day. Um, Fair Haven Day is taking place on Saturday, May 4th at Fair Haven um, Middle School outside. Um, last year was a huge success. We had over a thousand attendees, um, and this year we plan on topping our numbers. We'll have a variety of community resources, um, vendors, along with uh, volunteer and tabling opportunities. Live performances will be going on um, from 12 to 6 p.m., and a bunch of um, different activities will be taking place, including uh, the iRecycle truck, the Read to Grow bookmobile will be available, face painting sports, we'll have a bike rodeo, and a whole bunch more. Um, we're always open to sponsors, so if anyone is interested, we do have a sponsorship tier flyer um, that I can send out or put in the chat um, with our save the date. Um, so, yeah, and we're also going to be having a parade um, that'll be taking off at 10 a.m. from the John Martinez School, um, taking a 
right, I believe, on Grand Ave and leading up to Fairhaven Middle. Um, so if anyone is in, um, interested in walking or participating or contributing to the event, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll leave my email in the chat um, with the flyers. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Anna. All right, and uh, last but not least, we do have a quick announcement from uh, United Way. Oh, I know. Uh, um, I was asked last uh, last moment by uh, Joanne Wilcox from the United Way to make a presentation. She's actually in another meeting and was going to step out. I don't know. Uh, Joanne, are you on? Okay, so I do know what the announcement is because, she, as I said, she was in another meeting. So the United Way is doing a thing called Parent Leadership Program. It's, it's a program for parents to help them understand the development of their child and a bunch of stuff about education, so on and so forth. And it is a program to which parents apply. Um, they are have a deadline of February 17th. And um, if she comes on or afterward, she's gonna mail information. It'll be in our minutes and, um, uh, and it will be available. Please, if you're a parent, uh, or if you um, know of a parent, please share this information with them. It's a great opportunity. It's a program that had existed before in New Haven, got defunded from outside of the control of New Haven. Now the funding is back. We're always talking about our kids and you know how can we do better by our kids and there are kids that get in trouble, so on and so forth. This is a program to help parents with the development of their child. Highly recommend you look at this information when it becomes available, which it should through uh, through the email that you're going to get uh, when uh, Joanne gets the information to us. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, announcement, Lee. Uh, and then Liz, I, before we we jump to Alders, I just wanted to let you know that uh, Lieutenant Fumiati has has shown up. So if we want to circle back, well, you yeah, can certainly do that. All right. Good evening, how are you? Hi, everyone. Thanks for squeezing me in. My apologies for my tardiness. Um, I wanted to just uh, update you all on a couple of things that are going on around the district. I will keep it uh, as brief as possible. Uh, I realize I'm at the towards the end of the meeting here, not the beginning where I usually am. Um, really great month in Fairhaven the past month. Uh, we had um, uh, a downturn in violence. Uh, there were very few incidents of shots fired. Uh, one in particular happened on Lewis Street, um, which is a um, I wanted to highlight the work that was done around that particular incident um, because of some communication in the neighborhood. Uh, we were able to um, find a vehicle of interest as a result of that uh, incident of a, a shot being fired on Lewis Street. Um, Later on, uh, during the overnight hours, a shot was fired on Lewis Street. Uh, we don't believe there was a target in that particular incident. Um, an individual was identified as a person of interest uh, using some of our technology. Uh, it was actually traced back to uh, a vehicle that took off from officers when they tried to stop it a couple of weeks before in the area of Grand and Poplar. Uh, we used some of our camera footage to identify from that incident to uh, identify that it was the same person who fired the shot on Lewis Street. Uh, Put it out to our plainclothes, uh, the criminal intelligence unit and our shooting task force. And uh, within three hours of me texting them, they had stopped the vehicle, uh, arrested the person and uh, taken a uh, firearm off of him. And so uh, that's a great job. I really appreciate uh, it's a great job by everyone, not just the police, but I really appreciate the information from all of you to help us um, get guns off the street and prevent people from causing harm in our community. And so uh, without your information and without your help, uh, that is, it, it makes our jobs, uh, it makes our job honestly a lot easier uh, when we get good information from uh, the community. Um, one thing I just wanted to highlight, um, we saw an increase uh, in our stolen cars. Um, so there's a, there's a group of a couple of juveniles that um, have um, been consistently uh, conducting uh thefts of motor vehicle. It's pretty consistent. We had uh, 10 stolen vehicles in uh, the month of 
January from uh, different areas in Fairhaven. Uh, that was actually on the lower side for the entire city. Uh, overall, we have a downturn in burglaries. Uh, we had one robbery in the entire month, um, which is a uh, which is great for um, which is great overall. Uh, we had one of the incidents um, where on Grand Avenue um, recently in the last week we had a uh, double burglaries uh, into businesses. So the the offender was the same person. Uh, we believe we have a person of interest in that developed by detectives uh, earlier on today. Uh, basically, what happened was a, a person that, um, just after two a.m. on Friday into Saturday and just after two a.m. on Sunday into Monday, uh, took a brick and threw it through uh, two separate businesses on Grand Avenue, uh, hit one on one occasion and the other on another occasion, um, and took the cash register, um, took uh, a small amount of money that was left in the cash register, uh, but the damage that was done to the windows is obviously more costly than uh, what was actually taken in the burglary. Uh, we have a suspect developed, and so I'm pretty confident that we will uh, one, be able to deter that activity, but two, uh, be able to um, arrest that individual in the near future. Uh, the person that we have uh, identified, though I'm not going to share their name, has a significant uh, criminal history in the city of New Haven. So uh, we will uh, eventually, hopefully, uh, have an arrest with that. Um, otherwise, I, I had invited, um, I thought it was interesting, I invited um, our uh, Compass team to come and um, chat. So I wanted to update um, you all on that. I think it's important that uh, the police department continues to work with um, some of the populations that are out in uh, Fairhaven trying to um, improve outcomes when we interact with people who are in crisis, but also uh, people who are struggling with different things around the neighborhood. And so uh, we still respond to those and uh, make those referrals to Compass. And hopefully they'll be here next month to talk about some of the work we've been doing. That's all I have, unless anyone has any questions for me. I have one question. <laughs> Um, just out of curiosity, what date was the shot on um, Lewis Street? Let me check, just go through all my data here. Uh, give me one second. Right, right, right. Um, it was... Monday the 22nd, or, yeah. Yes. Yes, it was Monday the 22nd. Uh, yeah, it was in the overnight hours on Monday the 22nd. Any additional questions either online or uh, do you see a question here in person? Okay. Hi, um, I'm the president of the River Place Condos on Front Street. Um, last week, we had a rash of porch pirate thefts mm -hmm. um, of UPS, Amazon, and FedEx packages. And we have photos of the of the guy, but he was wearing a ski mask, so it didn't really help. Um, and it happened like three different times during, you know, over two days. Um, it was reported to, you know, the non-emergency number and, and uh, officers came by and took, uh, you know, took the reports. Um, but but he told our residents, you know, to be cautious of having packages delivered. <laughs> but I don't know if there's other parts of Fairhaven that are experiencing the same issue, and if there's anybody on the police radar that might be doing it. Um, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, so we don't track that as a statistic, but I am aware I actually saw uh, the calls those days for the thefts. Um, and so the officers are out looking for people. If you have pictures, even if you think that they are useless pictures to you, uh, please send them to me because they um, even pictures that sometimes seem like they might not be helpful uh, can be helpful at times. And so uh, we are able to identify people a, a lot off of very um different techniques. And so if you can send, if you uh, wanted to send those pictures to me, you could certainly do that uh, on my email or my cell phone. Um, and then we can see what we can get with that. I've heard of uh, someone in the Clinton Avenue area following around the Amazon Prime truck uh, in in the recent history. Um, and as soon as they make a delivery, they grab the packages. And so um, I have heard of that before. Um, and so those areas, uh, there's, there's a couple areas that get hit quite a bit. Um, and so if we can identify the people, I'll gladly uh, hold them accountable for that. Well, I'll send you the photos. And then um, why, just curious, have you considered a theft 
almost like a burglary. Why aren't they, why aren't they tracked? Um, so it doesn't fall under the major major crime category. We, I believe we have 12 different major crimes categories. Um, there's a theft from a porch is not considered a burglary. Uh, breaking into someone's, uh, breaking into a dwelling and then remaining there with the intent to commit a crime constitutes a burglary. And so if you break into someone's shed and uh, take an item from there, it would be a burglary. If you break into someone's shed uh, or their house and uh, don't do anything, uh, it's just trespassing. And so um, for someone taking a, a package off of someone's porch um, or uh, um, depending upon the situation, um, it is, um, I don't want to say simply a theft, but it would be categorized as a theft depending upon the value of the item that was taken. Then that would determine the um, the charge that we have for them, whether it's a, a different level of larceny. Because yeah, people have like medications, you know, delivered through the mail now and... Uh... That's like one concern that one of our residents had is, you know, they, they have, you know, medications that are, you know, over the not over the counter prescriptions. And, uh, you know, if somebody steals that, it might be selling them and sell on the street. So that, that was just a concern. And, you know, I think it would be valuable to, to track that since it's a, you know, a nationwide issue, just not local. Um, thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional questions? Uh, I see none online at the moment. All right. Well, thank you so much, Lieutenant Kumiani. We really do appreciate everything that you and the officers are doing to keep our neighborhood safe. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. All right. And moving on to our last category of the Alder reports. Um, I know, you know, Alder and um, Google did have from uh, notes that she wanted to pass on. She wasn't able to be here this evening. Yes, I have her notes up. So Alder Kupo has been reappointed to the chair's legislation committee or as chair of the Board of Alders Legislation Committee. Um, so that is her post. She wanted to direct everybody's attention to what we've already discussed, which is William Tong suing UI um, and to follow that closely. Um, and then she sends a Ward 8 newsletter. You can sign up at kupo48.com slash newsletter. So you can put that in the chat, kupo48.com slash newsletter. And then the Worcester Square Cherry Blossom Festival has been calendared for April 14th. It's a Sunday. So put that on your calendar. We are already looking forward to spring. So that is all from Alder Kupo. Thank you so much for those uh, updates on her behalf, Abby. Uh, Alder Caroline Candy Smith was award nine. Yes, she also sent some updates. Um, so her she's been appointed to the service, City Services and Environmental Policy um, Committee for the Board of Alders, and that is a conflict with the community management team meetings. Um, she's hosting office hours at the Fairhaven branch right before the community management team meetings, though. So 4.30. On the CMT meeting days, Caroline will be at this branch. Do you want to meet with her? She has a newsletter as well. Mm -hmm. um, I will also send these newsletters out in the follow-up email so that you can sign up for them easily. Um, and then she wanted to remind everybody about the Irish Run for Refugees, which Hasna has also reminded people about in the chat, which is on Sunday, February 11th. Um, and they're looking for volunteers. So if anyone's interested in volunteering, um, get in touch with Iris, and they can they can get you lined up. So that is all from Caroline. Thank you so much for those updates on her behalf as well, Abby. Uh, for Alder Ana Festa, no, not okay. nine years, not present in online nor in person. No updates to report. Alder Sarah Miller is here. Yay! Hi. Hi. <clears throat> so I am not on city services and environmental policy. Yeah. So I come to these yeah. meetings. Um, uh, and a lot of my updates were given through uh, various other reports. Two things that I can mention. Um, one is it was briefly mentioned in the event we had on Monday at Berryman School announcing the U.S. Department of Education Full Service Community Schools grant for the years. Um, we had Secretary Cardona here. It was a big production. It was really a great just um, community building event and also really 
communicated sort of the district's buy into this idea of turning our schools into more like community centers. So I think it was a great launch. And as we get into like planning phase, which is what gets underway now, we'll continue to give reports here and elsewhere and also be soliciting your feedback as the process goes along. Because we really want um, to think about this holistically in terms of families more broadly, even outside of the schools and how we really knit together the services that touch kids and families throughout the neighborhood. Um, the other thing I want to mention is Ana Juarez and Lee today um, led the questioning for the second day of the Redenti's package store remonstrance hearing. Oh, that's funny. Which was the different Redenti. Not trying to remonstrate. Um, uh, for folks who don't remember, this is the attempt to um, stop the renewal of the license mm -hmm. with the package store near the corner of Grant and Ferry. Um, it's like a really intense thing. You have to like pretend like you're a lawyer and it's it's this whole production. Mm -hmm. But um, it, I think it was very successful. We had a great turnout from the community, great messaging. Abby was there. I don't know if anybody else here was there. I was there in spirit. My friend was there in spirit. I testified today. Um, Eddie from the Fairhaven Community Health Center had really effective testimony. I don't know if Eddie's on. Um, he talked about observing firsthand intoxicated people purchasing alcohol, which is something we had, you know, we knew was happening most likely, but hadn't been able to verify. So um, great work to everybody who either testified or tried to testify or was with us in spirit. There will be a part three where they present their side on February 29th, and then hopefully we'll have a resolution sometime in March. So um lots of great stuff going on in the neighborhood like it's just so great that there's all these other reports and i don't even have that much to report <laughs> so thanks for everyone's work and collaboration thank you so much there all right um next up well again here in house uh alder frank for dan jr i'm gonna pull sarah i'm not gonna look in this chair <laughs> see me out loudly you don't have to worry about that so um first month down um, I want to uh, just let everybody know that my city email is finally up. So if you could put it in the chat, it's ward15 at newhavencc.gov. Um, I'm currently working on clearing the inbox. Which is quite <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, so I too got my committee assignments and I will be on the edu education committee the Youth Committee and the Community Development Committee, uh, which I actually got to sit on my first meeting last night and vote for a project in the Hill, which uh, will bring 150 affordable units two blocks from the train station. Uh, I'm also appointed to the Equal Opportunity Commission. Um, I gotta say, I'm really excited to be working on issues around here as a team with my, uh, my colleagues, Sarah and Caroline. Uh, we really hit the ground running. We've been seeing a lot of progress already. Um, just to let people know, just to help us out with stuff that's going on in the neighborhood, if you please just use C Click Fix to identify issues, it makes it easier for us um, to follow up on them. Um, we've all been meeting uh, with various department heads and uh, business leaders in the last few weeks um, trying to tackle issues. Uh, my office hours are also um, the same day as the community management team meeting from 4.30 to 6 with Caroline. So you get two alters for the price of one. Mm -hmm. um, and my last thing is Fairhaven Day, Fairhaven Day, Fairhaven Day. Um, I second what Kiana said. It's going to be bigger and better than last year, even though her number of 1,000, I think it was closer to 2,500, Kiana. Um, but yes, we are going to blow the roof off this place this year. So please volunteer, get involved any way you can. All the info's in the chat. And thank you. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate uh, all of your yeah. updates. Friend. I forgot to mention, I have I do office hours Saturday, first Saturday of the month, which I believe is this must be this Saturday. So I'll be here at 10 o'clock on Saturday if anybody wants to talk. With. Perfect, thank you. And I'm just uh, running down my own. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's uh, Dave, right? Dave, oh, you know, Dave, 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 Dave,
think they're good. Uh, and oh, there are Jose as well. I know he's not here in person. I do not see him online. Have uh, we received any um, updates from him? We have not received okay. any. I know they asked me because I'll be trying to be funny. All right. Adam did give the rundown about the uh, voting for this evening. He'll be sending that out um, to vote between now and Sunday. Um, wanted to just move forward with the uh, community forum uh, in the German. Any questions about the research agenda or recommendations for future agenda items and announcements? Please do uh, feel free to email us at fairhavencmt at gmail.com. Thanks for such a dynamic meeting, everybody. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, before we adjourn for the evening, uh, we have one one requested announcement from Sarah Dabala. Hi, I'm Sarah Dabala. For those who don't know, I'm co-chair for Ward 16, where Crespo um, is older. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to mention that um, we, uh, Celestino is um, having some health issues. He's also... He was also co-chair for Ward 16. He's recovering and going, you know, um, undergoing treatment right now. Um, and uh, we then decided to um, to uh, have Victor Ramos um, run for co-chair. He uh, collected some signatures. We went around the community and we sort of like, you know, um, talked to uh, constituents and um, and so as of yesterday, there were, there was no one who submitted. So now Victor Ramos is co-chair for Ward 16 with, uh, myself, uh, and, uh, we're looking forward to continuing to have conversations in the ward and, um, continuing to stay involved and, um, praying for Celestino. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to give that quick update. All right. Thank you very much. Go ahead, and just related to Liz's last point, point number 11, regarding community forum and questions and agenda, it was brought to our attention, um, the attention of the executive uh, team, that it's been four years, something like four years since our last retreat. That's uh, a meeting where we take time to do introspection. That's how we set up the, the agenda, these items, the categories, these were set up about four years ago. So since it's been four years, uh, the thought was, to, should it be time to do it again? So before bringing anything to you, this is gonna go before the executive committee at our next meeting to talk about what uh, we would like to propose to the general body about setting some time aside to think about how we structure the meetings what categories things go in, how we might be able to do things better. We will bring a proposal to you. That doesn't mean you have to do what we tell you. It's just we'll have, instead of saying to you, you know, we're open to anything, we, we do want to maintain a, a structure. And so we'll come to you with a proposal, possibly as early as March, but it may take us more than that. But that's in the hopper. Just want people to know that. Thank you for that uh, announcement, really update. And Gina had a good. Do we need to approve the minutes? We do. Do we have form? Oh, you know, uh, we, we we do, but we had a, a problem with the minutes accessibility. So anyone that was trying to access it online couldn't do so with enough time to to read it. So I propose so, that we wait till next month. Okay. okay. Do we do we have form? Uh, we we did. Uh, we probably still do, um, but yeah. yeah. I say I don't think we've lost that many people. I'm looking through the the chat here and the, the folks in the audience, and half of them are voting members, and half the people online are voting members. So yeah, we'll get it next month. <laughs> Okay, so with all of that being said and done, I'd like to officially call the meeting. Call for or, or, mm -hmm. Call for a motion. Call for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All right, great. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you next month. Have a great.
Thank you, everyone. I, I got my first uh, uh, raffle tickets bought through uh, Zelle. So I have Zelle now. <laughs> Right, have a good night, everybody. Thanks, Adam.